So this lesson is on checking derivatives with the graphing calculator. So let's do one. I will say f of x is 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. And I want to find f prime of x. So f prime of x is the derivative with respect to x of 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. So f prime of x is the derivative with respect to x of 3x squared minus the derivative with respect to x of 4x plus the derivative with respect to x of 2. 3 times derivative of x squared uh, with respect to x of x squared minus 4 times the derivative with respect to x of x plus. The derivative of a constant, remember a constant function is horizontal. Slope is zero, derivative of any constant is zero. The derivative of x squared, remember the derivative of x to the n is n x to the n minus one. So the derivative of x squared is two x to the two minus one or two x to the first. The derivative of x to the first is one x to the zero or the slope of x is just one. So we get f prime of x, we believe is six x minus four. Now, how do we check that on the graphing calculator? What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to plug this function into the graphing calculator and let the calculator determine its derivative and see if that derivative matches this graph. So I will pull up the graphing calculator and it will put in what I believe, put in my question first. So y is 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. And I want to graph his derivative. So I'm going to turn this function off. I just want to graph the derivative of that function. Now, how do I find that? Math, numerical derivative, which is number eight. Take the derivative with respect to x of the function y1. So vars, y vars, function y1 at every point x. This should graph that. They should graph that. So if I go ahead and graph that version, which will be in red, that's the derivative of my original question. This is what I get. Let's go with a better zoom. Let's go with zoom standard maybe. And I see that graph. And what do I think the answer is? I think it's supposed to be six X minus four. So if I look at the graph, so we have the derivative in red, now in black, I will graph 6x minus 4. Is it the same? And notice it graphed it right on top of it. So that makes me feel pretty good. So that's our basic strategy. Now let's do some more challenging kinds of derivatives. So let's go with a quotient rule problem next. How about g of x? equals 2x minus 3 over x plus 4. If we want to take the derivative, we're going to use the quotient rule. u is 2x minus 3. v is x plus 4. u prime is 2. v prime is 1. What's our rule? Remember, u over v prime is u prime v minus u v prime over b squared, what do I get? g prime of x, u prime v, two times x plus four, minus u v prime, minus two x minus three times one, all over v squared, all over x plus four squared, which is two x plus eight, minus two x minus three, over x plus four squared. Next up, what do I get? G prime of x equals two x plus eight minus two x minus minus three become plus three over x plus four squared. 
two X minus two X that goes away. Eight plus three is 11 over X plus four squared. So that's what I believe the derivative of that original function is. Let's take a look. Let's go back to the calculator. We are going to put our original function in y1, put our derivative in y2, and put what we think our answer is in y3, and see if y2 and y3 match up. Our original function is 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3 over x plus 4. We want to, I don't care to graph that, so I'll turn that off. But I want to look at its derivative. So the calculator determines the slope of the tangent at every point. Math, numerical derivative number eight. Derivative with respect to x of that function y1, vars, y vars, function y1 at every point x. And this will graph the derivative. And zoom standard is probably good. There is the graph of the derivative. Could that be the graph of 11 over x plus four squared? One, two, three, four. Might you believe there's an asymptote here? Yeah, maybe so. But, but is it 11 over x plus four squared? That's what we want to find out. What do we believe our answer is? We'll turn the derivative function off for a short while. We believe the answer is 11 over x plus four squared. And what does that graph look like in black now? That's an, it's an error, of course. 11 over x plus four squared, not times. Try that again. Is that the same that we had before? So that was the red function. The red function was the derivative. Do the red and the black functions match up? And I think it's probably fair to say they do. Notice how the one um, was constructed on top of the other. All right, let's do one more. This time using a chain rule kind of thing. So this time we will let uh, k of x equal the square root of cosine five X. So we have a multiple layer problem here to work with the chain rule. So K of X is cosine of five X to the one half power. So K prime of X is the derivative of something to the one half power which is one half something to the negative one half times the derivative of the something. The something of course being cos five X. So it's the derivative of cos five X to the one half. So then you pull the one half down, decrease it by one, one half minus one negative one half. So it's one half cos five X to the negative one half times the derivative of cos five X, which is gonna be another chain rule for us to work with. So this is one half times one over cos five X to the one half times the derivative of the cos of something, derivative of the cos of something would be minus the sine of something times the derivative of the something. Minus the sine of something times the derivative of the something, but the something this time is five X. So minus the sine of five X times the derivative of five X. So where does that put us? We are now at one half. One over, I'll change that to square root of cos five X. Times upstairs, we have negative sine five X. Times derivative of five X would be five. So let's try to write this as a single fraction. One, one, negative five. So negative five sine five X. Upstairs. Downstairs, two root cos five X. Hmm. 
negative five sine five X over two root cos five X. We want to check that to see if that's right. So that's our guess for the derivative. We're going to graph that function, excuse me, we're going to graph the derivative of that function, see if it matches this function. So let's pull up the calculator again. So the original function is square root of the cosine of five X. Make sure you are in radian mode. Quickly make sure of that it's indeed it is. So I have y is the square root of the cosine of five X. What I believe its derivative is upstairs, negative five sine five X. divided by downstairs, two times the square root of cos five x. And just pay a little bit of attention to the order of operations. I do not want to have the first function drawn. I just want to graph its derivative. I want to see what it looks like. Since this is a trig function, I'm going to do a zoom trig, although I expect it to behave rather strangely. That's pretty strange. So when is cosine positive? Maybe I'll just adjust my window from negative pi over two to pi over two. Again, just to get some idea of how this is behaving. Okay. Is that the same thing I get for my K prime? So we see that's in red. What did I think the answer was? I thought it was negative five sine five X over two times the square root of cos five X. We're gonna see if that matches up. So upstairs, well, that, that was upstairs. I haven't done the derivative. Now I'm gonna take the derivative of y1 and see if it matches. So let's do it that way. Math, derivative is number eight. Derivative with respect to x of that function y1. So this time I wrote in what I thought the answer was first. Now I'm gonna to check to see if it agrees with the derivative. So we'll turn off the red function. And the black function is the derivative of the square root of cos five x. Let's see what that looks like. Was that the same as the red function? Notice how the red function graphs right on top of it. And if interested, you could always take a look at a table to look at them instead. Maybe go, uh, start at zero, go up by 0.1. Just check a few points and see if they match up. You'll notice y2 and y3 agree at least at those three points. We could back it up a little bit. And we can see it essentially agrees. Remember, by the third decimal place, depending on our h, we may have some disagreement. But our graphs look pretty good. So I'm confident I have done that correctly.